Welcome to The Design Board, a podcast created by the team at Upspring that focuses on design, development, and everything in between. We invite innovators in our industry and explore topics that support your growth in every way. The Design Board is a proud member of Surround, a podcast network from Sandow Design Group featuring the architecture and design industry's premier shows. Check it out at surroundpodcast.com. Welcome, everyone, to The Design Board, a podcast by Upspring that focuses on design, development, and everything in between. I am your host, Susan Fernandez, and today I am joined by Gavin McDowell, president of Americas at Oriental Weavers Hospitality. Gavin has over 30 years of progressive creative designing and executive level partnering in the woven, Axminster, and printed textile industry. Gavin joined Oriental Weavers Hospitality in 2016 as a voice for design on a global platform. Thanks so much for joining us, Gavin. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? I am doing well, and I'm so excited you're here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited too. So let's start with the basics. Can you provide an overview of OW Hospitality for our listeners who may not be familiar? Sure, I'd love to. So Oriental Weavers Hospitality, or OWH, as we refer to it, is part of the Oriental Weavers group of businesses. Oriental Weavers is a global manufacturer of machine-made carpets and area rugs, and our hospitality arm is a very small part of that global organization. Gavin, can you start at the most fundamental knowledge that someone needs for this conversation? Let's take it down to the basics. What are the different types of carpet and what is the use case for each? All right, let's see if I can get this right. So you've got woven, machine woven Axminster, you've got machine tufted, you've got printed, and you've got hand tufted. Those are the four main products that are out there. So machine woven Axminster, the pattern is the face, the fluffy bit at the top. That's the pattern and it's part of the weave structure. So you've got your face yarn, which is your pattern, trapped with warps and wefts and the backing. That's all one piece. A machine tufted carpet, that grew out of the textile industry. And so it has a sewing component to it. So tufts are stitched into a primary backing. That primary packing is then glued to a secondary backing. So it's several pieces glued together. Printed carpet is a machine tufted carpet base, and the pattern is applied on the top with a very sophisticated printing process. So it's dye injected on top. And then hand tufted, the key is in the word, it's a handmade product. And that is not a machine made product. It's very much the design interpretation is visual. So on a machine woven Axminster, the pattern is digitally, the tufts are, every tuft has a place in the weave. In a hand tufted, that's not the case. In a hand tufted, the image is visually translated by the hand tufter. So he or she will visually translate the pattern from an image. And they draw the outline on a piece of cloth that's stretched over a frame. And then that is then paint by numbers kind of. So you draw the outline of the pattern on this big frame. And then with a tufting gun, which is like this tufting gun that holds several yarns in it. And you can podge that through and then you build up the pattern that way with techniquing. And then, of course, it's carved or it's hand cut or whatever to create the effects. But it's much more of a handmade product. That's technically the four different types of product that are out there for the most part. I mean, there's, there are other side tangent products, but those are the four main products. So how would you describe your approach to carpet design? Well, that's a really complicated question. I would say that we are a design-led hospitality team because my background is design. That's what I've done most of my career. We really approach the design process very intentionally. How would you describe OW Hospitality's approach to integrated carpet design? What does that mean? Well, it means two things, Susan. The design process with our woven product is quite labor intensive. The design is actually part of the weave structure of the product. So understanding the design process with a woven is really important. So we're very intentional with the design process and we're very married to the product and how it's made. 
you know, we work in a vertically integrated environment. So the manufacturing life cycle of a product from raw bales of wool to finished product going out, we're very engaged in that whole process. So managing the raw bales of wool coming in, washing it, carting it, spinning it into yarn, dyeing the yarn, creeling the loom, weaving it, finishing the product coming off the loom, and then shipping it. It's all done on one footprint. So we have an amazing sustainable story there in how we manage the life cycle and also manage the quality control of the product through as well. And that's a really very different approach for the craft of woven carpets. Is that correct? Yes, I love the word craft. I mean, what we do is a crafted process and the art of designing for woven Axminster is a craft. A part of your earlier question about how do we do it or how do we manage it? Well, we have a curated team of experts. We call it internally experts that people with knowledge, with legacy knowledge of the product, whether that's weavers or dyers or designers, even operations, people with legacy knowledge of how the life cycle works, how the product is made, that's all about craft. And for those listeners who haven't yet checked it out, you should go to the website owhospitality.com and take a look at some of their designs and you will really see how different they are. They're absolutely stunning. So with this vertical integration and you have a long history and you have a unique story in American carpet industry. So how does understanding this history contribute to the company's design philosophy? Well, I think context is super important, Susan. Context with the product. And America has a unique story with carpet. Woven carpet came to America originally and was focused in the northeast part of the country, so New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And then at a time in history, there was incentives to move weaving south. And it married with the sewing industry that was prevalent in the south. And the machine tufted products were born. So the context for that is super important in the U.S. because I find that a lot of people just don't know the story. They don't know the history of carpet and how the machine tufted industry grew out of the woven industry. It's a big part of understanding how we think about carpet, not just in the hospitality environment, but in the residential and contract worlds as well in the U.S., So how do you leverage those cultural aspects of the U.S. market in your design and marketing strategies? Well, first of all, I would say there's definitely a place for all of it. I think understanding the difference is a big part of our approach and a big part of my approach specifically, because I come from a world where woven is very well understood. You know, I grew up in Northern Ireland, grew up in that European culture where woven was very much a staple and part of the everyday understanding about carpet. And that's not so much the case here in the US. So education is a big part of presenting the product to customers. And a lot of our customers today are a younger demographic. So that sort of late 20s to mid 30s, a very exciting demographic, but a demographic nonetheless that doesn't necessarily have legacy knowledge of product. So teaching about product and how they're different and the attributes of them are really, really important. And particularly with regard to how the product's designed. I think nowhere else is that more important than in an Axminster product because the design is actually part of the weave structure. So understanding how it's made is vital to successful design. So on the most basic level, we're talking about the difference between woven and tufted? Woven, tufted, and printed, really. And printed. Yes. Okay. So I think that makes a lot of sense that certainly America is much more about the tufted carpet. There's a lot more choice here and all carpets are not made the same way. And so I find I'm customer facing a lot of my time in my role, which I love. And what I really find interesting is that there's a lot of people just don't know the differences and they're not really even nuanced differences. They're quite dramatic differences between how one might approach a design for a printed product versus a woven product, for example. They really are very different. And the success of the design is really connected to how the product is made, particularly in our woven environment. Yeah, can you walk us through some of those differences? Because that kind of goes into what my next question was gonna be, is that 
how does this American mindset influence how OW Hospitality has a relationship with customers and specifiers? And it sounds like there's a lot of education there. Well, there's a lack of education, I would say, and just generally. And I'm not sure that there's very much emphasis put on the product knowledge. And I think depending on who you talk to, there has been a bit of a brain drain from the industry. And that's sort of a terminology that's quite well used in circles, in our circles today. With economic turndowns, a lot of legacy knowledge has left the industry and has since been replaced with a younger demographic. So when it comes to specifying product, And knowing what to specify, there's a big opportunity to train and educate. So that's a big part of what I do when I'm in front of the customer, whether it be with CEUs, our continuing education unit that we do, or whether it's lunch and learns or any type of customer facing opportunity where there is an appetite to learn. We have a big emphasis on that, teaching about how the product works and how we design for it and how to be successful in design because that's what we sell. We sell design. So talking about this American kind of lack of, do you think it's like a lack of education of just the whole carpet industry or is it of the difference between the craft or are you looking at a bigger issue in America? I think it's a great question and I think it's both. I think that understanding, well, the craft, let's take Axminster just as a product by itself. The, the design process is a crafted process. I often relate it to a builder or uh, say somebody who's building a brick wall, that's a craft or someone who's doing drywall in a building, there's a craft to that. There's a trade that you learn, a craft that you perfect. And Axminster design is very much about that. It's a very pixelated product. Every tuft has a place in the weave. And the way we draw our images, the way we bend our lines and twist our curves, that craft of drafting we talk about is learned. It's something that you learn and it takes years to perfect. And with a printed product or a machine tufted product, the accuracy is not as necessary because how those products are made. With Axminster, every tuft is seen in the weave. It's placed intentionally and you can't distract from it or you can't hide it, it's very visible. The yarn is dyed separately before it's woven, so the yarn has color integrity all the way through. That's what I said earlier about the design as part of the weave structure. So it's very, very tied to the manufacturing process, and the craft of learning how to draw on a grid, in effect, is something that takes years to perfect. For me, I I remember starting over 30 years ago, we drew on squared paper, and we mixed paints by hand and we painted with gouache the patterns on the squared paper and then translated that through punch cards to the weaving loom. That whole process has been completely digitized now. And Photoshop, for example, is a software that has been adopted that was never really designed for the woven industry. So there's definitely a craft in understanding how the product works and how the design relates to how it's made. So That's very much, we're dealing with that reality in a broader conversation where there are other choices in America that are very popular. And that is what accounts for that really rich, detailed, exquisite nature of your carpets. I was looking at one of the projects that was inspired by a river and it almost seemed to move. It was really interesting, and you can only get that with those fibers that have that color integrity all the way through and is planned this way. Well, integrity is a really good word. I love the word craft and integrity, and those both go hand in hand with a woven Axminster. I say this in front of my customers and when I'm customer facing, there is an integrity with a woven Axminster that's hard to find in other products. Because the pattern is woven in, as we like to say. It's not added on or stitched to, it's actually woven through. So the yarn, you know, if you have a red yarn or a blue yarn, that yarn is dyed in a separate process. The wool is dyed all the way through. It's brought to the loom. It's threaded through the back of the loom to the front. It's cut and placed in the weave structure. So there's an incredible integrity. The design is part of the actual product. And so that's an amazing, unique thing about Woven Axminster. And the color is rich and it has a very long lifespan 
we jokingly say Axminster will ugly out before it wears out. And people in European countries have had Axminster on their floor for 20, 30 plus years. And if it's well taken care of, it will last a long time. Of course, that has a huge sustainable narrative today. We've always had a a sustainable story in Axminster, but it's never more important than the conversations we're having today. So it is a very, very rich, it's a beautiful, it's luxurious product. And it's wonderful. It's a wonderful product. It really is something that when once you see it, you absolutely get it. So there's such a piece of education about this. But if I'm a designer and I'm working on a hospitality project and I come to you, how does this work? Like you have to educate me as to why this is different and better. But then when I start, do I hand my drawings over to you? Do you come to me with ideas? Like how does this happen? Well, it's great. It's a great question. Every project that we do has a custom story. Everything we do is custom to start with. And every project has a story. And the narrative is presented to us by the interior design firm or the architectural practice or whoever it is we're working with. And then we collaborate together with the client and we build around their narrative. Today, unlike years ago, the client had a very strong knowledge of the product and knew what it could do and how to achieve the effect. That's not so much the case today. So there's much more responsibility placed on our internal design teams to really know how to manipulate the pattern, create depth and shadow, texture, and really build the story. So to your comment about the river, the pattern that looked like a river, Axminster is like a blank canvas on the floor. It's art on the floor. And we paint on the floor with a woven, crafted understanding. And we build collaboratively with the client. And we take the lead as much as we're encouraged to do by the client to build around their narrative and relay for them back what we believe their vision is for the carpet. Sometimes it's a very quick turnaround and sometimes it's much more complicated depending on the complexity of the narrative that they're trying to build. Sometimes the patterning is much more simple and graphic and sometimes it's very complicated, lots of depth and layering to it. So it can be any and all of that. And also we can build all kinds of textural detailing into the patterns. We can make it look like there's loop in the pattern when there's not. We can make it look like there's multiple layers of patterning going on. So it's an amazing product. It's a wonderful medium. I talk about it being like oil painting or watercolor painting. It's another medium just like that. And understanding your medium and feeling comfortable and confident with your medium is vital in the woven world to having design success. So how do you balance that fine art aspect and the traditional craftsmanship with the demand from the industry? They always want to know what's next. They want innovation. How are you doing that? Well, that's another great question. I try not to pay too much attention to trends. I think over the years, I've learned that I would much prefer to set my own trends and set our own trends. So I will certainly play some kind of awareness to trending out there and, of course, need to be aware of what's going on. But I think that has really changed. I would say we are, as a business, We are not only changing the way we do design, but we're changing the way we think about design as much as anything. And so I follow trending to a degree, and then I stop that. And then I focus on things that we're involved in as a global team, because our design teams around the world collaborate once a year on some group work. And we present that at various points through the year to the customers' ideas and starting off points for projects. I think that's far more important that we embrace the collective global attitudes with each other and flourish with creativity that way than to be married to particular trends that may or may not be out there. I think it's a fine line really between being married to trending and setting your own trends. And I think we've had much more success when we lead the charge as opposed to follow. That makes a lot of sense when you think about your deep understanding of this medium that kind of anything is possible. And we look towards our artists to lead us, not to be reactive, right? Absolutely. And I think that's really true 
of this younger demographic who are making decisions and are choosing who to work with and what to specify. My experience has been that younger demographic, they want to know why and how. They're not so tied the way we were several years ago to trending, oh, the color of the year or what's trending here or there. There's less emphasis on that because the world has become a much smaller place People are traveling much more easily. Our clients are from all over the world. Yes, we're based in the U.S. and our market here is focused on the U.S., but our clients are not necessarily from the U.S. I'm not from the U.S. A good 50% of my team is from somewhere else. So there's amazing opportunity to be creative collectively as a team. And so we just don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about trending. Certainly pay some nod to it, but I think we lead the charge and our customers expect that. They look at us as knowledgeable, as experts in our craft. And particularly with color, when we're working on coloring, they may provide us with color palettes that they fully accept that we may tweak them or change them out because we know how it might work better. If we change this one color or made a small change here or there, it might make the result better. There's much more willingness to let us make those kinds of decisions. It's a very different world as a carpet designer today than even just 10 years ago. Then there was a lot more of those decisions made for us. Now we're expected to make those decisions for our customers. So when you talk about the emerging customer for you or this new generation of customers, we're talking about millennials and Gen Z, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. Yeah, they have an incredible desire for knowledge and also authenticity, which is another word I would associate with OW hospitality. It goes along with that integrity and craftsmanship. And I think there's a definite thirst in the market for that. Absolutely. I love the word authentic. And we've actually been described as authentic by several of our customers. I've heard them refer to us that way, particularly in how we present ourselves on social media before COVID, but more especially during and since, we have promoted ourselves via social media because we had no other way of doing it. We couldn't meet with people. And so to keep things moving, we upped our game a little bit on social media, but we didn't do it in a high-tech way. We authentically presented who we are. And I think that if you work with Oriental Weavers, generally, that's what you come away with. We are an authentic global team who are growing brand and doing that together. And that's been one of the greatest joys of my career is working for a company where you feel that way, where you feel like you are part of something different, where you're helping to grow something different. And there's the facility to do that. So I think we truly are authentic and in the relationships that we have with our clients and how we do the process of Woven is a very authentic experience. With that, Can you tell me a little bit about your environmental story? And the reason I'm asking is that when we talk to designers, of course, one of the big things that has been in the American tradition is the toxins within the product from all the glues that are used, as well as clogging the landfill. So those are the environmental concerns that we hear. How do you address those? Well, the big thing about Axminster is that 80% of the fiber is wool. So it's got a large portion of the yarn content that is natural fiber. And wool is a protein-based fiber, so it will completely break down over time. So that's one of our biggest legacy talking points, really. Like I said before, we've always had a sustainable story for that reason. Our yarn is 80% wool, 20% nylon. The nylon is in there to offer a little bit of stability to the wool, but it's largely a natural fiber-based product. And then in terms of how we manage sustainability, we are a MindClick leader. And MindClick is a process that many manufacturers go through every year. It's sort of an auditing process of all of your processes at your factory. So how much carbon dioxide, oxygen, electricity... What do you do with the wastewater from your dye house? And our sustainable story is very personal. So we have our manufacturing headquarters is in Cairo, Egypt. And we have a large campus and a large portion of it is green space. And so practical, authentic ways to deal with sustainability there is to recirculate the wastewater from the dye house to water our plants. We have a massive tree planting 
program because Oriental Weavers has an investment arm, a real estate arm. And so there's a lot of planting that has to go on. So we have a massive tree planting program, tree farms that support that. The solar part, we have solar panels now installed in some of our buildings in Egypt. I think the takeaway about sustainability for us, it's practical, it's authentic, and it makes sense for us. So I would say that about it. And I think the mind click portion of it speaks specifically to our responsibility here in the U.S. because that's a U.S.-based program. But our partners around the world are facilitating the sustainable narrative in practical ways for their regions. Can you give us the definition of MindClick for those who are not familiar? MindClick rates the environmental health performance of manufacturers and their products. That's the technical definition. It's a way for Marriott to navigate manufacturers and vendors for their projects and their properties. The idea is that they will support vendors who are MindClick approved. I guess that's something that designers will increasingly look for, that type of certification or what your rating is. Yeah, I think it's one of those initiatives that's still getting momentum, still bringing on momentum in the U.S. It's still a fairly young thing. I mean, several of our competitors are MindClick members, but not all. And many of the major ones are, but not everybody that's in the marketplace. And it's a way to be accountable, I guess in the manufacturing environment. And the tricky thing for Oriental Weavers is we're a global company, so we already have a very active, sustainable story because the parent company is so engaged around the world with major customers who all require these ratings. So we're already doing it, but the MindClick initiative here in the U.S. speaks to our hospitality arm specifically here. So weaving carpet is an ancient craft. What does the future hold? What do you see for this? Well, I definitely see more and more woven Axminster because 80% of the yarn is a natural fiber. And I think the idea of Axminster wearing longer and lasting longer is really important now, especially with this younger demographic who that means something to them. I think just to go back to that demographic again, There's a tremendous integrity with how that younger demographic thinks. And they really are super engaged and wanting to know why. And so the CEU that I teach gives a global perspective on carpet. It talks about how it started, how it moves through Europe, came to the US, and then what we did with it. People love to know that. And they don't know it because they're not taught it. Many people aren't taught it. So there's an appetite for it. And I think understanding what Axminster can do and how it really is relevant. I think that's another word I would use. It's a very relevant product in our conversation today, where maybe other products became the go-to or the became the norm in this culture. I think that Axminster should have and will have a very positive future because of how it speaks to the environment that we're living in today. So I see more of it used. I see the potential of it being used in other applications not necessarily just hospitality environments. I can see it being used in crossover markets as well. It's just about education. It's understanding what it is. It's also had a legacy of being thought of as a higher cost product, but that's not the case anymore. And it's certainly not the case for us. So we can be very competitive with other types of product in the marketplace. So understanding what it is and what it can do And knowing how it can be very competitive is also provides an opportunity for a very healthy future. Gavin, where can listeners find out more information about OW Hospitality and stay updated on the latest news and releases? Well, I'm so glad you asked that, Susan, because what I tell customers is the best way to understand who we are and to see what we're doing is to follow us on social media. So Instagram is OWH Creative or LinkedIn and Facebook at OW Space Hospitality. But Instagram is where it's so interesting globally because in the US, we live on Instagram. In the UK, it's more LinkedIn and overseas in different parts of the world, it's different platforms. So we try to do the same content on all three. And we're very uh, intentional about how we present on social media. And we are authentically doing it. So you will see latest installations of projects. You'll see 
lunch and learns or CEUs that we've been giving. You'll see training schedules that we do. It's very hands-on. It's very, this is who we are. It's the best way. Of course, our website, owhospitality.com, but the best way to see who we are day to day and up to date is OWH Creative on Instagram. Can designers come to the campus and see it in action? Well, we manufacture in Cairo, Egypt. So yes, and we do take customers. We've had many customers. Uh, we would love to take people to Egypt. It's an amazing facility there. We do have rug manufacturing for the residential arm in Dalton, Georgia, where our U.S. hospitality design and operations team are based. And we do bring customers up to Dalton. Yes, we would love to do that. We'd love to show off the design process and some of the weaving looms that we have in Dalton. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Reach out. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for listening in with us today. We hope you leave inspired by the ideas in today's episode. For more, follow Upspring on LinkedIn and Instagram. And don't forget to check out the amazing lineup of shows brought to you by the Surround Podcast Network at surroundpodcast.com.